welcome back to one of my videos again. Here we are in uh, not so sunny Spain today. It's a bit cloudy and we've had a lot of rain. Uh, today we're going to put a gearbox in and shim it up and uh, see how things go. It should be fun. I know you've seen lots of these before. Everybody's done gearboxes but what the hell. We've got the coronavirus. I'm stuck in the house so I'm just going to just knock some videos out for everybody to enjoy. It's a bit of entertainment isn't it? and uh, keeps me busy. So let's go ahead and uh, stick this gearbox in. Okay this is what we're going to be needing to shim our gearbox. We've got vernier gauge, some feeler gauges, selection of shims and our gearbox. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, shim up our gearbox. shaft in as you can see I've just pulled it in with two cones and they're, they're just the right size if you use two cones it just pulls it in nicely and uh, basically because it was all still warm it pulled almost in by hand and I just had to finish it off with a spanner now we'll leave this in place while we do the gearbox because your lay shaft has to be tight so to get the correct shimming if, you, if it's not bolted down the lay shaft, you won't get your, the, the shim correct. So, now we're going to go in and fit our gearbox and end plate. We don't put the Christmas tree in. We'll just put the gearbox and the end plate in to measure our shim. And I'll show you how we're going to do that now. Right. As you can see, I've got a socket here that's ground down to the size so what we've done is we've already had in uh, the 2.6 and the 2.4 millimeter and now we're down to a 2.2 now the lower limit is 0 0.7 or three thousandths of an inch and so that's the close we want to get it to as close to the the tighter tolerance as possible and we can go up to uh, 0 0.3 millimeters so I've already been in and as you can see you slide this in the back here between the shim and the end plate and we get a nice just a nice drag feel to it it goes in fairly easy you don't have to force it too hard and that's right that's the right kind of clearance you want so you can just move it through and it's not tight and you have to force it, it goes in. So that's, we're running on 0 0.76, three thousandths of an inch. Okay. So we'll take this off now. Because I've got to put Of the parts backing. So we didn't uh, put the Christmas tree in or any of the other parts because uh, it, this just makes it easier for on and off because we've had to go on and off three or four times. I didn't just show you going on and off three or four times because you've seen this God knows how many times on other on other people's videos. So this is nothing new, but as I'm building the engine, I thought I'd show you that we are doing it the best we can. So that's our shim, that's our gearbox, which has now got to come out. So let's find the other parts for it closer now right what we're going to do is we'll put some grease 
on this needle roller and on the shim make sure the shim goes on needle roller Christmas tree also we'll put some grease on this shim needle roller a bit more grease on that okay fit that in okay now we've got the gearbox to go in fourth gear goes with the big shoulder facing out yeah GP third and fourth's a bit close a bit difficult to get in Then we've got a third gear, which has the big shoulder facing towards the back. Second gear, the same, big shoulder towards the rear. Come on. And first gear, you can't go wrong because it's got the teeth for the kickstart pinion on there. Now, goes in. Okay, the shim that we've already shimmed up to the right clearance. And we'll put that on with a little blob of grease, helps it uh, stay in place. Okay, our end plate. Make sure your locating dells are nice and tight because they locate the position and they're very important make sure our face is clean we don't want any debris on there because that stops it from getting a good tight bolting down it needs to bolt down to a clean surface okay and on we go should go on pretty easy. Yep, it has done. Okay, we can put all the rest of our shims away now. Out of the way. Uh, so there we go. It's just a matter of bolting it up. We'll take these del these bolts out now. If you use nice lung 10 mils, you can use T bars if you can get you can make them up yourself, T bars, but you know. I haven't bothered. A uh, couple of long 10 mils are good because you can get a good hold on, on them to pull it off. And these are the extraction points, you all know that. You've got two extraction points. But is it the extraction points are not centre are not opposite the shaft, but they ought to have been there. Of course they're a bit off, you need to lever a little bit on, on this side to get it off. But that's just a tip there. Okay, so we put on our lock washers mm -hmm. hello okay we found another washer we seem to have had one missing don't know how uh, so another lock washer on now for a uh, Bolts, nuts, get our nuts on. And then we're going to torque this down. Now, my talking dancing sequence is going to be. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, 
six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how you torque it down. Right, we've got a torque wrench set at uh, 15 pounds feet. Of course, this is a tuned motor, so it needs a little bit tighter on the end plate. We just spin them down and tight for now. Okay, so first of all, put some pressure onto this one. I don't go to the full torque straight off on one. Try and get an even pressure. So we're number one. Number two. So that's disappointing because that has a problem. So it's back off. We have a problem with the thread there because that isn't tightening up at all. So that's not good news. With engineering, if it don't feel right, it ain't right. There's no second guesses. Right. And as you can see, the telltale pieces of alley on there, we've got a strip thread in the casing. And I didn't put naffle pressure on it at all. So that is a repair job. So now for the helicoil kit. Okay, we've got to uh, back to square one again. We've got our stud back in uh, to the correct depth. Always depth it the same as the others, so they're all in the same depth. Now we can start again when my compressor stops running. <laughs> okay. Right, back in with our gearbox. Okay. Wash 
washes. So it's not always straightforward, as you can see. The threads all looked okay. It was tight, but as soon as you start to put some uh, some torque on it, that was it. It just ripped the threads out. Better for it to happen now than when you're riding down the road and your end plate comes loose. So let's just whiz them up. Feels a bit better already on that one. Right, one, two. anyway but we'll one come on That's for some reason don't I go that one's tight that's tight Okay, it's gone now. Tight, and that's it. It's on. So that's it. Gearbox in, torque down, and uh, ready to rock. As far as I'm going today with this. So you never know. Let's get that in neutral. Lovely, jubbly. Thank you. Well, not everything goes to plan. We've always got a few issues uh, when you're putting stuff together. You never know what you're going to find. So this time we had a bit of a problem with the stud. Luckily it was only one. Uh, so we had to fit an helicoil in there. And it did finally talk down to the, to, to the setting I wanted. Uh, we went down to 15 pounds feet. That's quite tight for a Lambert gearbox. Most people go to about 10 or 12. But uh, I'm a stittler on the end plate. I don't like them coming loose. It's a pain in the ass. It wrecks, you. it wrecks the entire casing if it goes. So it's always meant to make sure that that is really tight. So that's what I go to. 15 pound feet. Uh, so that's the end of that video. I hope you all liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and bang the little bell and I'll keep the videos coming and keep safe Corona's everywhere especially here in Spain Jesus I'm not even going out the door <laughs>